Welcome to OBD2 Monitors. Now, we get asked all the time why OBD2 monitors don't run. And in this training, we would like to help you with that, not only how to use the monitors, but why don't they run? You know, we're going to ask you questions back. You know, are there any good trips? Are there any bad trips? Have the enabling conditions been met? Are there blocking conditions present? These are some of the questions that you'll be able to answer after this training. So our objectives will be to understand the OBD2 monitors and go ahead and use scan data to determine monitor status. Check the status or trips and the warm-up cycles, discover failures that keep monitors from running, select the diagnostic procedures for failures, such as scan tool or diagnostic uh, digital storage scopes. So you're going to have to use your scan tool, look at the different scan data information about the monitors, and then determine what diagnostic process to follow. Two of the main monitors are misfire and fuel trim. They're the most important for drivability. Now the misfire monitor is very important when you're dealing with drivability because the computer uses software to determine how many misfires and where the misfire is located in which cylinder or cylinders. The fuel system monitors help with too rich or too lean overfueling or underfueling conditions when working with drivability. There are many more monitors, but these two really stand out, and you really need to understand them when you're dealing with drivability. Frequent questions, you know are why is there an engine miss without a misfire code? Why can't I get the monitor to run? How can I be sure the check engine light is going to stay off after the repair? Other drivability monitors that may affect drivability but more than likely won't would be the EVAP monitor, the cold start emission reduction strategy monitor, variable cam timing system monitor, the electronic throttle control monitor, the comprehensive com component monitor. Now I'll give you a little fudge factor on this one. Any comprehensive component monitor failure that's pointing to a component, fuel system component, ignition uh, system component will certainly cause drivability problems if there's a failure. And the EGR system monitor is very important. We know EGR can dry, uh, drive you crazy when you're trying to diagnose drivability problems. Now the onboard diagnostic second generation OBD2. The advancements of OBD2 have improved to a level where it can be used with all the confidence in the world. Mode 6 data results are for the monitor tests that are used to set non-continuous codes. Mode 6 information is very accurate and helpful. Codes and Mode 6 do not replace the need for a technician. They can help you find the root cause of the problem, however. The diagnostics management system is designed to control spark and fuel, monitors operating conditions, perform diagnostics, ignition counter and cylinder identifier, give you pass or fail results, record the results, perform test failed action, default actions, alert the driver, turn the mill on, and request for any defaults that the problem may set. Now when we look at these, we want to say that the performs diagnostics, ignition counter and cylinder identifier, pass fail results, and the records re recording the results, of course, are some of the most important things that we need to answer when doing drivability. Now don't limit the scan data to just PIDs and diagnostic trouble codes. Scan data is very useful when diagnosing faults. Even if you're not going to read the scan tools instructional manual, it's a good idea to expand your scan data capabilities.